Hello everyone. Namaste from Joy of Reading. Today's story is Where did my call go? The author is Samida Gunjal and she is the illustrator as well. Published by Pratham Books. Tring 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 tring. Hello. So we all know about the phone and this allows us to call people that are far away thousands of miles away from us and yet we are able to speak to them immediately so where did my call go and how does this call happen let's find out from the story when we speak into the phone our voice enters it in the form of sound waves so when we speak or talk into the phone our voice travels in the form of sound waves and reaches the phone there. The sound waves rush into the microphone and are changed into electrical signals. So when we are talking, the sound waves are captured by the microphone first, right? That's what a mic, a mic that we speak into, right? The phone also has a mic inside it. So they first go into the microphone. They are captured by the microphone. And then there are several electrical chips inside this phone that convert them into electrical signals. You can see here, right? Um, so the sound waves are coming in, captured by the microphone, and they get into, become electrical signals, like this thing you see here. The phone's antenna changes the electrical signals into electromagnetic waves. These waves are picked up by the closest cell tower. So, so now the phone also has something called an antenna. Antennas are nothing, are metal structures that are able to uh, receive and then trans transmit or send uh, radio waves or TV, uh, the waves that are used for uh, uh, in television. So they are helpful in receiving and getting electromagnetic waves. So this phone's antenna, you cannot see. It's usually in older phones, you will see a metal rod sticking out like this, but in newer technology, they're all inside the phone. So this changes the electrical signals into something called electromagnetic waves. So waves, we keep referring them to as waves, right? It's nothing but like heat from the sun reaches us, right? And it travels in the form of like an oscillating form called waves. And that's why we call it as uh, waves. But it is nothing but energy traveling in the form of waves. So we get heat waves. Similarly, there's something called electromagnetic waves. These are nothing but it's a form of energy. And it is made up of both electrical and magnetic field. That's all it is there to it. Just like how heat reaches us in the form of heat energy, in the form of heat waves, um, the electrical signals are converted into something called electromagnetic waves, a form of energy which, is, which has both electrical and magnetic field. So the antenna in the phone converts the electrical signals into electromagnetic waves. And then what happens? It then sends these electromagnetic waves and these are picked up by, you can see the cell tower here, a small cell tower that are close to uh, the place where we are, maybe a house, a school, or a shop, there are small cell towers that are there. It's picked up by the closest cell tower. And then that small cell tower then transmits these waves. Let's see where these waves go into. And then sent to a large cell tower. So you can see these huge cell towers, right? So the small cell towers transfer the electromagnetic waves and they reach the large cell tower that is closest to the small cell tower. And afterwards, what happens? The large cell tower passes on these waves as signals through wires where they travel. So this large cell tower you can see, right? Then passes these electromagnetic waves in the form of signals through wires that are there under the ground. So electromagnetic waves, right? If you check into them, they cannot travel like really very far, far, far because the conditions in the atmosphere or the things present in the atmosphere will weaken them. That's why after from the cell tower, they are transferred as signals in uh, through wires. 
And let's see where it goes, these signals through the wires, where does it go? Along mountains, over roads, and even under sea. So these signals go across like along mountains or roads, and even under the sea, they travel through these wires. These wires are nothing but optical fiber cables that run all over the world uh, between different cell towers. There are cell towers across all geographic regions for these signals to be passed through and they can uh, be under the sea as well. That's amazing, right? Until finally the signal reaches the large tower closest to the person being called. So these signals move from one cell tower to another cell tower until they go to the cell tower that is closest to whoever we are calling them. So you can see, right, uh, how it travels across the world. So these cell towers are all across the world and these signals pass through all of these. Um, and imagine how fast it must be because we're able to hear the voice almost immediately of the other person when we are talking, right? So these travel really, really very, very fast. So you can see like, you know, India is here and cell towers are located all across the globe and these electromagnetic waves transfer these sig after the cell towers take these electromagnetic waves and transfer them as signals under the, uh, uh, through these wires under the land, under the sea, so on and so forth. The large tower then converts the signal into electromagnetic waves. So once it reaches um, to the cell tower that is closest to the person we are calling, this large tower then converts the signal that, is got, that, is, that it has gotten from these wires again back into electromagnetic waves. So the whole process is now reversed because it has to reach the person who is receiving the call and sends it to the cell tower closest to the phone you are calling. So now it comes to the smaller cell tower that is closest to the phone you are calling. So this person apparently, you can even be going in a bus as well or a train. The phone's antenna receives the electromagnetic waves and the phone changes the waves into electrical signals. So the phone's antenna gets the electromagnetic waves and then it then converts them into electrical signals. Finally, the electrical signals are converted back into sound waves using the speaker. So the electrical signals now are converted back into sound waves and are then sent through the speaker in the phone. And that's how sound is heard on the other side. So once it's uh, transformed into sound waves, we can hear the sound. So how a call travels? Let's look at this whole overview of how this call travels. First, the person talks, the sound waves are there, it reaches the phone, it then gets converted to electrical signals, and then the phone again converts them to electromagnetic waves, and these are captured by a small cell tower. From the small cell tower, the electromagnetic waves go to the large cell tower. And then as signals, they pass through these underground wires all across to the large cell tower, which is closest to the person we are calling. And from the large cell tower, the signal again gets converted to electromagnetic waves. It goes to the small cell tower. And from the small cell tower, the electromagnetic waves reach the phone, the antenna captures it, and then it's converted into electrical signals. The electrical signals are then converted into sound waves and the sound waves from the speaker of the phone travel to the person's ears. Isn't that wonderful? How this whole call travels, how many things are involved in between? You might be thinking that, how will the cell tower know where this person is and it can pass to the right large cell tower, right? For that, there is something called a mobile switching center. So you might want to look up into the internet and find out what it does. We will also be sharing a link to a video um, to explain this in more detail 
Um, so do take a look if you're more interested to find out how the, uh, the, the cell, how the location of the large cell tower of the receiving person is known. I hope you enjoyed uh, this piece of informational story along with me. Thank you. Try these. Find out from your elders how they communicated with those living far off before cell phones. Try to find out all forms of communications that they had utilized. What happens if the cell tower is not close from where you make the call? I would like to give a hint for this question. We discussed that electromagnetic waves cannot travel very far because there are many things that weaken the electromagnetic waves as they travel far and far off. So if the cell tower is not close, what happens? Also think about the bars that you see in the cell phone. Those five little bars that you see up on the telephone. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this session with me. Till we meet again next time. This is Harini. Bye.